Hey Station Nation, today we're going to go through the transmission HST linkage. There's a little bit to this section and I'm not going to get too much into the, the hydrostatic transmission too much in here. Uh, I'm going to have to touch on it a little bit, but this, this linkage is kind of important because really, um, as we talked about, where when you put your foot on the pedal on the inside, it does the two things. One, it goes to the engine um, and then increases RPM, makes the engine go, right? That's, that's how you get power. But it also um, operates your HST linkage. So that's going to go down to the transmission, and we're going to get into that um, in this video. Cool. All right, so what we were talking about on that side, this is your foot pedal control. So when you hit that foot pedal, it operates this, right? So it's going to swing this here. And then we were talking about this line, the um, engine line down there. You can kind of see it operate when I do that. And that's going to give you your RPM. Well, when this bops across here, um, it comes down here and then hits this linkage here. This is your HST linkage. So let me just do this and you can see that operate. There's a spring here that puts everything back to neutral, basically, or, or to stop. Down here, there's just a little damper. So this damper basically just makes that system nice and smooth, basically. That's all that damper does. So this is just going to go down like this. And all the rest of this is just kind of trying to get this cam back into neutral position. So that's your stop position there. So right here, out, and then it wants to go back. So this is neutral stop right there. Coming over to here, down this linkage. Now this nut is out right now because I was uh, playing around with this. So in, on yours, this nut would be tight. This lock nut, oh, come on now, would be tight to here, okay? And if we come, if we follow that through, it comes down back right here. So this bar, is what operates your swash plate, which operates the pump side of your hydrostatic transmission, okay? So that's the pump side. Um, Without getting too into detail on how a hydrostatic pump works, as this plate uh, operates, as it, as it moves, there's a pump inside there rotating, right? So as your engine is as your engine as your engine is getting RPMs, there's a pump in there that's rotating, and then there are these little pistons in there that can open and close and open and close. It's spinning around and open and closing. So when you when you open this valve, let's say, it allows those pistons to start pumping just a little bit, right? And the more it opens, basically, it allows that throw to pump more and more fluid through it. This is tricky to demonstrate without, like, actual picture. So, so as you're opening this valve up, you're allowing more fluid to be able to be pumped, as well as the, up, the engine RPM is making the whole system faster. So you, you've got more fluid capacity to pump, and you, you're, you can pump more fluid at one time. So that's how you move forward. Essentially that pump turns a motor, uh, a hydro hydraulic motor, which is actually more or less the opposite of that. We'll get into that later, but this valve right here is very important actually. So the, what's, what's really interesting about these things is in a, in a, if you can think of like a, a zero turn lawnmower where you push forward and it goes forward and you pull back, it goes back. This actually can do that same thing. So this system, if you were to be able to pull that lever, pull this lever backwards, you could go backwards essentially. So let me show you how this works just a little bit. Okay, here we are. We've got the engine running. We're going to put it in high gear. Now see, I've got the back wheels up on a jack, so they're free and they're loose. So I can, I can start playing with this system and seeing where I'm at. And they're not moving right now. So I'm in I'm in high gear, but my wheels aren't moving. Now I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna start moving this rod. And as you can see, like I was saying earlier, the wheels are going backwards. So now the tires are going backwards. So if I could actually move that plate further backwards, this whole machine would go in reverse. So now I'm gonna start moving this back. I'm gonna start moving it back so that I'm zeroed out or in neutral. Um, it's very important that this is in neutral when you are just at a dead stop because that's going to help everything 
get back into place. So just really slowly, real gently, I'm gonna move this backwards into a good spot until my wheels are completely stopped. Right there, you can see it. So now they're not moving at all. That's perfect, right there. If I keep going that direction, they're gonna start moving forward, and this is what I'm talking about. You don't want that to be moving forward at all. You want that to be completely stopped. So it, I'm gonna push on the gas, basically that's the pedal, and I'm still moving forward. That's not where you want it. So I'm gonna keep going backwards, and I'm going clockwise here, right until those tires stop. That's the perfect spot. No movement at all. Now you just wanna tighten up your nut, your lock nut. Make sure that's nice and tight. I'm gonna hit that with a wrench here in a sec and just make sure that your wheels are not moving at all. Perfect! So one thing I want you to make sure you know, this nut is actually a reverse thread nut, like a turnbuckle. So the bottom one, if you wanna turn this one out, if you want to break this one free, it's just lefty loosey like it regular regularly would be. This is a 12 and this is a 14. So you're gonna to wanna to, you wanna get your 12 on the nut and then hold this with a 14 just to make sure it doesn't spin around a little bit. So just get your 14 on this and then your 12 on that. But up here, um, this is going to be this is a 14 as well, so 14 fits right on that. And then this is your 12, but that's a reverse thread. So actually you wanna tighten it you want to go uh, clockwise to tighten it because uh, of the reverse thread. So I just want to make sure that you know that before uh, before you start like really wrenching on that and it's not going anywhere. So it's a reverse thread. I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. Um, before I get too much into like the HST, I know a lot of people talk about uh, turning up the pressure and all that sort of stuff. And we'll, we're going to get into that. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that this adjustment this is a pretty serious adjustment right here. Um, making sure that your wheels are, are loose. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you pull on this and you go back to zero, when everything's zeroed out, that your tires aren't moving. So make sure that both of them are, are not moving. If they're moving in reverse, that's really horrible. Uh, and if they're moving slightly forward, you're gonna have a hard time shifting too. So over time, if you have a hard time shifting, it might be right in this HST linkage right there. So. So that's that. Um, I'm going to leave this video right here. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all of the support and everybody's, um, you know, comments and just ask questions. I'm totally an open book on this stuff. I love, I love the machine and I, I love talking about it. I think it's great. So thanks for having patience with me. Um, for those of you that are following me, like currently, I really uh, appreciate your patience. For those of you that are following this later on, um, this is no big deal. It seems like it's just one series and, and there's not really a start and stop. So have a good one. Might as well show you this while we're here. We got a nice little clutch project. Actually, the clutch is fine. Um, here's your dr front drive shaft. This is a 2009 Outback. Got the transmission out. So he's having trouble shifting. Well, the master cylinder and the uh, slave cylinder were working fine. But what we found out was the clutch fork was broke right here. So as they were operating the clutch uh, for the throw out bearing, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. So um, as they were operating the clutch, this fork arm wasn't working. So the throw out bearing wasn't basically uh, engaging the clutch. So that's not gonna do any good. So we got this thing out. I'm gonna try to finish up this, uh, probably this week. We got parts ordered. The, the clutch fork is ordered and um, just, you know, Doing shop stuff.